Hello and welcome to episode 16 of our Obda Ludum campaign. In the last episode, we chilled out for the most part, but we did help Gilcallus expand a bit. For a mission, we needed an ally in the Bulwar region to have three green provinces and like us. And unfortunately, the Harpies only owned one, and Obda Tunger only owned one. Gilcallus also owned one. So we had to expand them out a bit. We got them one province down here in the south, I believe. We, that, this was one of them. We also made them take these two. It took a couple tries to let them take these lands. They didn't really want it the first time, but we got to figure it out, right? We got to figure it out. So I have to say, the map waters are looking pretty good. Except for this and like all this. This, this right here has got to go. It's either got to go to meat or it's got to go off to Tunger or it's got to go to Siren Bar. Uh, and I don't want it, so we're going to try and get this to Sirebar, but they've guaranteed them, so that's not happening. That is not happening at all. Uh, so today's agenda, I, I kind of want to get rid of these guys if I can. Um, I don't know how we're going to pull that off. I don't really want to no CB them, but if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. Uh, we are waiting for a couple province modifiers here to get ready to go believe it's in here yes importing soil until 1647 and once that's completed we can actually do two missions which is exciting and then we can go here in fact we could do this before these two um we probably should just to see what else there is to do so it's siren bar siren bar is the one that absolutely refuses to have high relations with us uh because i'm allied to their rival we have neighboring different religions yeah, whatever, right? Whatever. We will just go ahead and insult one of their rivals here. Hello. Yes, orcs. You are orcs, so you deserve this scornful insult. And that puts their relationship high enough that we can complete a mountain of love. So the Serpent's Reach has seen many centuries of conflict and turmoil, but those have come to an end. Through our efforts, we have reclaimed it and made it safe again and free of any orcish taint. But we could not have made such strides alone. With the help from the Gelkali and Harpies of Bulwar and the Wood Elves of Sirenvar to protect us from the dangers of the surface, we have acted in turn to defend them from the dangers of the Dwarvar that spilled forth as consequences of the Green Tide as well as from one another. It is only right, then, that they too are able to experience the wonders of the Dwarvar like we do. Let us throw wide our gates to our surface-dwelling allies and show them what love has wrought. In the Halls of the Mountain King The Dwarven Hold is nothing less than architectural marvel. An example would be the Warding Gate of Verkul Skomdir. While the wards themselves broke during the Day of Ashen Skies, the physical structure itself is an example of lasting dwarven engineering. For the average dwarf, the miracles are commonplace. As they live in these holds for their whole lives, their grand and ancient halls are all that they know. So when we, the first visitors, started arriving, we were unprepared for the feelings of wonder and awe. Thus we are reminded of why we carry on the legacy of our ancestors, and why we remember their names. It is because they built the world in which we stand. It is through the eyes of our foreign friends and allies that we see our home for what it truly is and take pride once more in our heritage. All right, so we gain 25 prestige and plus four tolerance of heathens until the end of the game. The other races will begin to visit the Serpent's Reach. What elf events will now be enabled and we obtain new missions. That's good, because that was sounding like that was the end of the run and I was like, uh, well, this is going to be an awkward start to an episode. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> uh, but no, we get more missions. Let's check it out. Oh, yes, we did. Okay, we sure do. Let's see here. Today's friends. Yes, yes, yes. They all need manpower. Uh, that's... Good luck to us for getting that. That requires the AI not losing bunches of men to attrition. And we all know that's going to be difficult, you could say. Very difficult. Uh, here are the merchant guilds, and that's the vineyards. Respite from the Fey. Oracle Skomdir needs a mage tower and a fort level of at least four. Well, well, well. That I can do. Mage tower we can't build because any money. Well, I can I can pause. That's not a problem. We have a proper entrance here. Uh, Shastun Deer is owned by me. It has a castle, has a center of trade of at least two, and it has a marketplace. So Glogan Cave is unfortunately exactly that, a cave, one that happens to connect to the surface, but a cave nonetheless. To facilitate proper high volume trade and entry into the Serpent Spine from Bulwar, we will need to secure the hold of Shastun Deer, which was once famed for its marble and will be once again. Repairs to the old markets in the hold will be necessary, however, and since it opens up to outside the Serpent's Reach, we will have to ensure that there is adequate defenses in order to protect from threats beyond our hills. Plus 20% trade efficiency for 20 years. The Copper Dwarves. No. No. 
They're gonna make me release them. No. Oh man. Well, dang. I went through all this work to make them strong as a vassal, and this is what has to happen. Well, you know what they say. If you truly love something, you have to let it go. Oh my god. I mean, I would like for them to get more land. Um, who is bringing in all these troops? That would be Busalar. Okay, well before we let them go, we're gonna help secure them a little bit more land here. I want them to at least own up to Bal Ord if I can pull it off. That would be nice. Give them all that. Give them Krathenor as well. Also add to Busalar, but we could break that alliance, I hope. And then we'll be able to do good things. Very good things. Marblehead Separatists. Alright, let's put those down real quick. We got guys right here to deal with it. Uh, Harpy Clan provides tribute. Recently, a local official has fallen in love with a local Harpy. Oh, you. I'm not going to pay all that money, but... That's fine. Good luck with your, uh, your marriage there, bud. Go ahead and pay off loans real quick. And let's get the Mage Tower built up. Also, we have uh, forts that we need to upgrade. It's pretty important for a dwarf, so let's make sure we're on that. No, 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 no. Okay, is it just, is it really just that one that I missed? Oh, there's another one I missed. I can't believe I missed an outside hold. That's a, that's a bad fort to miss. Mountain Hugger Separatists, okay, let's go deal with them. Rebel Uprising, yeah, they're all out here in Abdul Tungur. They're a little bit unstable. Might they uh, choose to love their new subjects? That might help them. Just saying. Burden Bliss is equal amongst men. Okay, good for them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just put all that down. We can rebuild the old Dwarvar Rail. Yep, let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to build up a... Ah, we don't need a fort right here, I don't think. That's all that I can actually colonize. That's it. Uh, so we're going to need to go to war with Skewer Drake at some point to snag all of that. We'll wait for this colony to finish, then we'll get a claim, and uh, then we'll probably end up going for it. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. Right, so at least, yeah, probably Gore Basenbrog would be my guess. Seems like a decent thing for us to own. Right, belongs to a, a dwarf, not an orc. Eventually, maybe Hehodavar, but we'll, uh, we'll see. That is a bit ambitious for now. We have things to focus on on the home front. Oh yeah, go ahead and get level 3 advisors. We've got so much money coming. Look how cheap they are. I'm being foolish not to just fully upgrade them. Just all the way. You're actually not an accepted culture. Am I not an empire yet? Oh my goodness. I'm not an empire yet. That is cursed. Okay. Whimsical wishes. Under the influence of some fate trickster, a young and unwise wood elf has caused significant devastation off the Ludum in an attempt to pull some kind of prank. Uh, that's bad. Because I need... I need, I need, I need, I need... Where was it? There was something that required me to have prosperity in my capital, right? I would have sworn that I just saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. How long is this going to take to build? 1645? No, that's gonna be, <laughs> be way too long. Die. Oh, it's so expensive. Just do it. Just do it. We gotta keep prosperity here. Also, we can turn that edict off. Are there any other edicts that I can turn off while we're just chilling here for a moment? Yes, this one in Zarn. Alright, uh, let's pay off the other loan. There we go. Now we are debt free. A good place to be. And mission fulfilled. Today's friend. Oh, wow. The AI actually has hand power? That's surprising. 20,000? 7, 7, am I misreading this? Oh, this is just Harpy Lynn and Gilcalis. Oh, okay. Well, that's much easier than also having Siren Bar do it as they sit here and, you know, take attrition. Uh, we have forged a diplomatic arrangement like none other. Human, Dwarf, and Harpy work together in mutual love and unity towards a brighter future for all. As the face of warfare changes with the proliferation of firearms, we will need to constantly be adapting with our allies, and we must make use of all our race's unique skills. Taking this opportunity to work together, we shall practice strategies and exchange ideas to ensure we remain up to date to all sorts of military tactics for when our armies need to leave our mountain homes. All right, we get in 50 mil power and yearly professionalism for 10 years, as do our friends. 
Nice. Now I need to uh, increase Harpulid's opinion on me a lot. Right, we'll, uh, we can influence them as well. Am I influencing Abdel Tanger first? Hold on. I am not. Pull that, pull that back. Goblin refugees? Yeah, sure. Let me influence my vassal first. Just to make sure he's getting some more monarch points in there. Sure. And a respite from the Fae. There we go. Uh, the mace shower's built. Let's go ahead and get this done first, though. Oh, we were so close. We are improving relations, though, so... Shouldn't be too long. Alright. A respite from the Fae. We got everything built up. Awesome. So, the elves from the Deep Wood have become very adept at living alongside the Fae. However, this is an arduous existence, and some elves have started to seek out the quiet and solitude of the caverns around Verkul Skomdir to rest and meditate before returning to the woods. Some have even chosen to stay there, setting up small sanctuaries for those who seek respite from the Fae. That's right, never trust the Fae. Uh, 50 of each Monarch point is lost. We gain one base tax in the province. We add an elven minority size. The culture becomes Wood Elf, and the religion becomes Fey Court. Local missionary strength minus 5%, but plus 6 yearly tax income, and minus 2 uh, local unrest. Interesting. Okay. I, there's going to be some people that are not too happy about that one. That's for sure. What is this? Elves being allowed into the mountains? I don't know. I don't know about that one. But we're friends, so we're going we're gonna to have to deal with it. Uh, oh, I need to be at peace now. Great. And Opta Ludum needs a courthouse. Well, okay. Let's get that built up. That is not difficult for me to do. Uh, can't believe I have to get rid of them. Very sad. Very sad. Elven tolerance level is integrated. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That definitely sounds like a good idea. Are you telling me I'm going to have to develop up some elves? Do the elves have at least any good trade goods? Uh, salt and copper. Alright, well, let's encourage development. What did it say? I was at like 12 of uh, whatever I needed. There we go. Now let's go ahead and accept what elf. That should bump them up to tolerated. There we go. We have a thousand crowns and Verkul Skomdir is at least day level 3 and elven tolerance is integrated. The abundance of high-quality wood that we now have access to from Sirenvar has inspired a lot of new uses by enterprising artisans in Verkul Skomdir. The most popular use has been making toys for children. These new toy makers create elaborate wooden puzzle boxes and wooden puppets, but also simpler things like wooden horses. Lose a thousand crowns, but exotic wood will now be produced in Verkul Skomdir, giving minus one national unrest and plus 50% trade value modifier. I'm not gonna lie, not thrilled to lose the copper, right? Not thrilled at all, but the people have chosen. People have chosen. Eh, it's only like 0.25 less. That's eh, whatever. It's fine, it's fine. Alright, we are zooming through some missions today. Zooming through some missions today. Uh, that just needs some time, and we need to be at peace. It's true purpose. We have built up the courthouse here. Uh, originally, the Tunnels of Love were pretty were a place where lovers could ride into our hold in comfort and enjoy the scent of flowers and drifting petals while music was played to set the mood that they would enjoy while staying in our hold. With the fall of Alduarov, lovers' riding carts were replaced with savage orcs, flowers and falling petals were replaced with spikes and burning pitch, and the only sounds made in those halls were not of love, but savagery and death. But the Dwarvar is safe and open once again, and so the tunnels of love will be set to their original purpose once more. While there is no moonlight to illuminate our guests on their scenic ride, some things are best left in the dark. Mmm, spicy. Uh, minus 200 crowns, we lose 100 admin points, and we get Restored Tunnel of Love until the end of the game, we get minus 2 National Unrest, plus 5% National Tax, and plus 10% Fort Maintenance. Honestly, it's not the end of the world for that. We got plenty of money. Okay, now we just need to be at peace. Yes, 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 yes. We can do that. We just need to be at peace. Scientific Revolution continues. Who should benefit? That is a great question game, and I am going to choose probably Diplo. Yeah, probably Diplo. That's what we're most behind in. One of our generals has died. Rippy Dippy. We still got some though. 
Are you gonna end this war anytime soon or Rail Skulker Rayuelli Separatist? There we go. Mission time out of the scorching sun. Both Gilcalis and Harpyland like us a lot, and we have completed diplomatic ideas. The lands of Gilcalis are harsh, desert, mountain, and highland in equal measure. They are not a rich land in life, but they do possess a rich culture and pastoral tradition, which makes the Gilcali almost as hardy as the land they call home. With our help, the Gilcali have recovered their ancestral territory. Now, some now wish to, however, call our mountain halls their home as well, moving wholesale into Abdel Ludum. As well, the Harpies of Harpyland also wish to visit from time to time for purely business reasons. So long as they can all pay, there should be no need to deny them as well for making use of our services. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Small tolerance increase of humans and harpies. Human and harpy events will be enabled. Abdaladam gains a human minority size. And Abdaladam gets harpy visitors until the end of the game. Plus 5% local tax modifier, plus 1 attrition for enemies, and plus 10% friendly movement speed. That's really good. And I think we can now officially say <laughs> we have the hold of love. Alright, we have wool from sheep, the sheep folk. So, any owned province needs to be wool. Pace production of at least five. It needs a workshop and textile manufacturing. Seems that we already have that. Uh, the people of Gelkalis have a long storied tradition of raising sheep and making fabric from their wool. While it is no fine silk or lace, in the rough mountains and cold desert nights, thick wool cloth is perfect for tents and tunics. It would also be the perfect... It would also be perfect for the chill that the cavern outside our holds can bring. Goats and sheep are tough animals, and with some clever engineering, we could perhaps bring some underground. Let's invite some herders from Gilcalis into our caves, and see if we cannot adapt such creatures into living underground. Alright, Garnet Heart will gain three base production in a human minority size. And they are your equals. So, Gilcalis and Harvey, they need to be at peace. Total army size needs to be at 75% of the force limit. That's me, I believe. And we need an army equal to or larger than 100,000. At least two known countries, the culture of Sun Elf, total development is 150. And their capital is in the Bulwar region. Well, there's Jad, there's Bersartanshus, and there's Eliza. If they've moved their cap, this is, I don't think that's in the Bulwar region though, is it? Subcontinent? No, that's not. So I don't know, I don't know what it's counting, but it's saying that we've got it. Uh, okay. Oh, it's one of the following. It's one of the following must be true. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. At least two all-known countries, culture of Sun Elf, and total development is high. So I guess uh, Bersartan just is high enough. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, the new Sun Cult of Bulwar, established during the reign of Jahair, who was seen by the humans as the region of their guard incarnate. Whether or not that is true, Jahair's followers after his death, the Sun Elves, took this belief and twisted it into forcing humanity into the status of slaves and servants in their own homes. Garen would no doubt be livid if he lived to see the injustices Elven kindness forced on humanity in Bulwar. And what would he think of us letting such injustices continue unchecked? This must come to an end. We shall send diplomats to convince them of the matter, and if they refuse, we shall remind them that love comes in many forms, including a love of battle. An envoy will be sent to the two strongest Sun Elf nations. This might lead to war. Oh, okay. So obviously... <laughs> Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's look at this here. Because Jad is not actually Sun Elf. They're Desert Elf. Nope, they're Sun Elf. Never mind. It's just their culture group is uh, Desert Elf. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. We'll see. 30 days. Let's set some rivals before that happens. Uh, Grombar? Yeah. Let's see if we go to war or not. The Elven response. The most powerful Sun Elven realms in Bulwar have sent emissaries detailing their government's responses in long flowery words, riddled with veiled insults and scathing words, but in the end, they have refused our demands. Declare war on Eliza with Make Them Listen CB. Only Gelkalis and Harpyland will join us in this war. We must use the Affirm Our Stance peace deal. Declare war on Bersartan Chess with the Make Listen. Make Them Listen Costas Belly. Only Gilcarcus and Harpyland will join us in this war. And let them feel the fury of the mountains on their heads. Let them listen. That's right. We love everyone, including your subjects. So you're about to be freeing them. I don't know what this does. We're about to find out, though. And here I thought that we were just going to sit here peacefully the whole time. Okay, really? Is now the time? Is now the time to call me into a war? I'm about ready to break my alliance with this guy. He just keeps calling me into things, and, and I don't want that. Just leave me alone. Now, these guys are no pushovers. 
Never mind, they're pushovers. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, at one point, they were not pushovers. Now, though, nah, not so strong. Not so strong. What was once the powerful state of Resartanshis is now nothing more than a husk of its former self. Prathenori Separatists will send this stack back to deal with them. That should be more than enough. And we could take tech here in two years. They could be thinking about attacking here. That would not be great. Wow. Three star general for the rebels, huh? What do you know? Harpies overhaul Jorkad. It is like a scene from a frightening campfire story. Harpies descended upon the village in one of our provinces, attacked it, and let loose the, as it were, birds of war upon the innocent inhabitants. Um. Retaliating will only anger them. That gives us a very large tolerance increase of harpies. We're already at coexisting, but. Sure. Let's get them up to integrated. Why not? Why not? Might as well. Also, with our money, we could just, like, build things. Yeah, just build all this. That'll work. That'll work. Dang, these rebels are putting up a hell of a fight. Props to them. I mean, I hate them, but, you know, gotta respect the, the hustle. Gotta respect the commitment. There we go. We have taken Brassard and Chess's capital, and we have another mission complete. I believe that is, yes... Vineyards of the cave. So we finally imported soil into our caves. Uh, wine, regardless of its origins and those who drink it, has been a symbol of love and romance. Thus, it is only fitting that we turn these new cave farms of ours into places where a unique vintage, unlike any other in the world, can be grown. However, we are not farmers by trade or heritage. So it will take some time for our workers in these vineyards to really begin uh, accumulating the experience necessary. Regardless, however, this labor of love will be seen through so the lovers of our hold may drink a wine that is truly made from love. With the Stranger Crowns 100 Avon points, we gain a bunch of development in these caves, and it now produces wine, and it has local production efficiency. Hmm. Well, it's untrained hands for 50 years, it be minus 50%. So instead, it's really like minus 20% local production efficiency, but that's fine. Uh, it's a good thing we're not relying on that for our economy, right? Now, Master of Nature, the merchant guilds need to have influence lower than 50 yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to take away something here. Whatever gives them lots of influence, preferably. That only gives them five. This is gives them ten ten. I mean we could get rid of the monthly diplo power. That lowers their loyalty overall. That would make it much easier to revoke land from them. Nope, right here. Commercial advisory board. Five loyalty, ten influence. Don't like that. Get rid of it. No, oh, thank you. Also, pioneer initiatives. We don't need this anymore, I don't think. Would that help our absolutism? It would, actually. Okay, we'll take that off as well. You stay. You stay. Oh, yeah. All that stays. All that looks good. Okay, uh, they're sieging down one of my forts. That's just the way it is. Let's hit these guys on our way up. No, 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 no. Oh, is he coming to reinforce this? He was trying. Let's get a full combat stack up here. That way we can for sure stack wipe that... St well, stack. Obviously. You go over here and let's check out the peace deal. So. I need to use... Affirm our stance. We will force Brassart and Schist to accept the humans as equal. Huh. And can we give this away? No? Ah. I was kind of hoping that... Maybe we can. Maybe I just need to occupy and transfer. I was hoping to give this over to Gelkalis. It's part of a state that they own, and it would make really good borders. Same thing right here with Elisna. I want to give this over to Gelkalis, because it'll make really good borders. And that's that's important, obviously. If we're going to be friendly and not attack the AI all the time, well then, damn it, I'm going to make sure that we have good borders. All right, that's love. That's love. Self-sacrifice in order to make the AI look better. Oof, it hurts. It hurts my soul, but it's what we must do. Also, bad news, I don't know how we're going to get onto Eliza's um, capital. Yeah, that's going to be difficult, considering it's on an island. I have no boats. Adotunger uh, has boats. Are they scootage? No. Not scootage, but, I mean, it's still going to be inconvenient, nonetheless. More goblin refugees. 
Have we accepted goblins yet? Let's take a look here at uh, racial intolerance, pop control. We're at coexistence with the gabos. We're at coexistence. So we're almost there. All right, we can take all techs now. Beautiful. Get all of those going. Upgrade to the swivel cannons, which is going to give us some extra firepower, and that's exactly what the dwarves are looking for. Uh, don't actually go up that way. Hey, yeah. Come on the outside and then swing up. That way they can't run away. Oof, we barely won that. Oh, we will not win again, though. Uh, barrage this and move back just to make sure they don't. Wow, we got really lucky there. But we held out. A lot of infantry died, but that's okay. This should be a wipe. That's caves, so. Never mind. That's 123 discipline from Elisna. Oof. I mean, it wasn't a wipe, but like, it was. It was up there. Oh, oh, there it goes. Now it's down there. Uh, sure, go ahead and give me that. That's fine. And I think we're pretty close to being able to. Yeah, we can definitely get Bursar just out of this war. Uh, we just need to get our troops down and onto Elisna's land. That way they can actually go do things in case Prasartanchus doesn't want to give us access. It's it's possible. I mean, it's kind of petty if you ask me. We'll think about it. Now, they wouldn't give me access, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the unspeakable. Drinking competitions are a common sight in taverns. They are usually held between members of the same race to keep things fair, as dwarves will drink anyone else under the table. But now, a wood elf has done the unthinkable and has managed to outdrink a dwarf. He must have cheated. He must have cheated. Mm. No. Impressive. Get that elf an honorary beard. That's right. Give that elf an honorary beard, all right? I still think he cheated, though. All right, I'm just saying. Just saying. I think he cheated. Out drink a dwarf? I think not. Here falls ill. No! Please don't die. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for not dying when I asked you not to die. Go ahead and spam some universities out. Yeah, I just gotta get through this and up into here, and then we'll be good. Luckily, the Bersartan Chest War is already uh, over. Oh, right. I need to go occupy this and hand it over to uh, Gilcallus. Can I call them into the war still? Okay, I can't call them into multiple game. Why would? Okay, well that that doesn't make any sense. They should automatically join these wars then, because I can't call them into either of them because they don't. They 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 can't be called in multiple wars. That's not how the game rules work. That's okay though. I think we'll survive. I think we can make it. All right. Also, like, give me max money and give me war reps. That's what you get. Yeah. Get rid of your cores. Actually, you know what? We'll be a good friend. Get rid of all of your cores on our ally here. They're not yours to have. All right? They're not yours to have. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of cores. Wow. That's a lot of cores. But we are a good friend. We shall do this. There we go. And Rosartanchus has to accept the humans as equal. I don't know what that actually means mechanically. Oh... Wait, did they get switched over tech groups? They got switched over to Bulwari tech group. Oh, okay. Interesting. I didn't know that was possible. But that's cool. Well, I mean, maybe not for them, but who cares? <laughs> we won, they lost. Uh, get over it. Be mad. Welcome to love, baby. You gotta love. You gotta love. No, I'm not interested in world marriage with you. We still have the problem with the Jad Empire, by the way. They're still here. They haven't collapsed yet. Nor do I think they will, unless the command decides to uh, get involved, which is possible. But then Buvari might jump on them. We only have 210,000 troops right now. It would not take much for Buvari to like double their force limit. Yeah, what's the war goal, by the way? Not good. Not good. I don't know how we're going to get 50 war score here. Uh, we're going to have to move fast. That's how. Because we're going to lose taking war score now every single month. That is not a good place to be when I can't get to their capital. Like, I just, I legitimately cannot get out to their capital. They have too many boats. They have outplayed us. Manufactories. Unfortunately, we did not spawn in manufactories. 
Okay, let's send the cannons up here as long with like half the infantry. You guys go and get all of this siege down. We'll be good. Make sure we're devastating his provinces. That'll make him want to peace out faster. Yeah. Uh, honestly, we should just barrage this as well. Just get it over with. Fortune goes down to 64 influence. I uh, can't be summoning diets. Oh, reform meritocratic recruitment. We need to switch that. Yeah, we need to switch off of this. Let's go to admin free policies. Do I have multiple admin policies? I do actually. I have multiple admin policies enacted right now. Let's switch over to that. And that should take away a lot of the influence of the merchant guilds. Yeah, look at that. And now I can get rid of colonial charters and that will bring them below 50%. We just wait for their loyalty to get back up there and then we're good. Awesome. All right, and let's affirm our stance. They are willing to accept that just barely. Okay, so now... No, they're still sun open. I don't know what I did. I don't know what it did. I'm not sure we'll figure it out though. All right, everybody walk home. All right, where is this mission? Tough love. The Sun Elves have been defeated. The Sun Elves have rejected our demands to make the humans their equals. When words fail, diplomacy continues by other means. In this case, war. We shall grind them into the dirt and feed them the humility they so clearly lack. We gain 20 power projection, as do Gilcalus and Harpylin, who were not involved in the war at all. An era of peace. So, all known countries is a human sun elf or dwarf nation of Bulwar, and it has a pinion of me of at least 125. Who doesn't have that? Oh, a harpy does go. Okay, so we need to have. Wait, wait, wait. Did I ever see that? Yeah, human sun elf or dwarf nation in Bulwar. So we have to make Bersarnishus like me, and we have to make Elisna like me, which is going to be difficult because I'm allied to their rivals, and I declared war on them. They're not going to like that very much. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to like that very much. Uh, what we might want to do is actually hire an improved relation guy. Make sure we're maxing them out. Very cheap. Very, very cheap. In fact, it's someone who... Look at that beard. That's a magnificent beard. You're hired. Uh, we just want to try and make everybody like us now and do a little bit of chilling out. We got to wait for the, the merchants. They got to get more loyal. We're going to have to release Abdel Tungur in the next one. Uh, probably going to go over with Ordia and all their allies, and probably also Krathanor. Give Abdel Tungur the borders that I want them to have, and then we release them as an independent state. And hopefully my allies don't start attacking each other. That's what I'm most worried about, is that once Abdel Tungur and Sirenvar own land next to each other, uh, they might get a little uppity, you could say. A little bit uppity. So what I might want to do is snag these two provinces for myself. I know it's a little bit of heresy. Dwarves outside the mountain. So let me know what you think about that. Jumping out here, grabbing Bal Ord and keeping a border between the elves and these dwarves just to make sure that they don't fight each other mechanically. You know, that would not be good if I was, had to choose. I need them both to be chill. But that is all the time that I have for today. I would like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.